Hello all, welcome to Trinity Software. Let's see how to build a quiz application with Python in this video. We are going to use two concepts here using JSON and TKinter. JSON is used to store quiz questions, options, answer, and TKinter is used to create the GUI application. So let's see the six steps through which we can build this quiz application very easily. The first step is we have to create a JSON file where we can load our questions, options and the correct answer. Then we are going to convert this JSON array to Python list so that we can make use of it in our Python code. And we can use tkinter to create the labels required to display in the title and question, radio buttons for options and next button navigate to the next question and finally we can display the score after the quiz is completed. So we can see the steps in detail. The first thing is we are going to create a JSON file. This is a simple format JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It is used for storing and transporting data. So I have used three arrays here. One for question, one for options and another for answer. I have loaded only five questions and the corresponding options and the corresponding correct answers. Fine. This must be placed with extension .json. So this is our JSON file, quiz.json. It is stored in this format. We'll move on to the second step. Now we are going to convert this JSON array to Python list. So this is the code for converting the JSON array to Python list. Before that, I'm just going to import tkinter and message box for displaying the result and JSON for retrieving the data from JSON file. Here we are creating an instance for tk and we are setting the window size as with the 800 and height 500 and we are setting the title to be quiz. After setting all these things, we have to use root.main loop so that the window will be running. Now we are just going to open that quiz.json file using this command as here and use json.load function. This is used to read the json document from the file and it is stored in obj. Now it's so simple to convert this data to a python list just by calling obj of qes obj of options and obj of answer and storing it in q options and e so let's check this by printing q options and e so this is the code we will run this we have got this window nothing else has been created just a window size of 800 into 500 and title is quiz fine and now the questions the options and the answers all these things are printed as list here okay and the third step is we are going to create labels for displaying the title and the question so here we are creating a class called quiz okay and then in the init function that is the constructor the question number is initialized to zero and then a function is defined here which will return a label to display the question number so that is called here save.question and the label returned is stored in save.quest variable. Fine. This function is just going to create two labels, one for displaying the title and another for displaying the question alone. Q of 0. Initially it is Q of 0. The first question will be displayed and it is placed with the corresponding x and y coordinates. And we are creating an instance for the class quiz. Only after creating the instance, the corresponding constructor will be called. Fine. Now let's check how this works. So this is our code. So the title is displayed as well as the question is also displayed on the exact positions where we have mentioned the x and y coordinates. Fine. Next step, we are going to create the radio buttons. Actually, we have four options here. So you are creating the radio buttons and it is called here. I have this variable called self dot opt selector initialized to int variable it means that it can hold only an integer value so this function is actually going to create four radio buttons for all the four options and it is stored in a list called b okay and initially the text is empty and we have this self dot op selector okay we have got this we will run just the radio buttons are alone created now it's time to display all the options okay so in order to display the options i have defined a function called display options and it is called from 
the constructor. So what happens exactly in the display options? We have initialized a variable value is equal to 0 and opt selector variable is set to 0. It means that nothing is selected in the radio button by default. None of the radio buttons are selected by default. And then we have this self turquoise of test. This is actually the label which was returned by calling the function questions. So this label of text is set to Q of QN. So later when we call this display options, the next button. So at that time, whatever question number is passed here, that question will be stored in the label. Fine. And all the four options will be displayed using this for loop. So now let's check our program with the display options. So on running this, the options are also displayed. The next step is we have to create the next button to navigate to the next question. So we are creating two buttons here, next button and quit button. And I didn't write the command for next button since we are going to write the function for next button after this. So just the command for the quit button is root.destroy. So that whenever you press the quit button, it will close the TK enter window. So we'll see this. So after adding these buttons, we'll check the output. So we have got two buttons. If you click next button, nothing is going to work because we have not yet uh, defined the function for this button. Whereas if you press quit, the window will be closed. Okay. Now it's time to write the function for next button. Let's see what should happen if next button is pressed. There are two things to be done. If the next button is pressed, I have to display the next question and the corresponding options. Apart from that, I just want to verify whether the user selected answer is correct or not. So both these things are done in the next button. So the first thing is in order to check whether the answer is correct or not, I have defined one more function. This is you are checking the condition like self dot or selector dot get get method will retrieve the user entered value okay so if that value is equal to correct answer from the list a of qn in that case you are going to return true so this will return true if it is true the number of correct answers is initialized to zero here and it is incremented by one and as i said if the next button is pressed the question number should be incremented by one and we have to display the options for that corresponding question number. Fine. We have to call this next button function in this place. Button if here you have to call this command is equal to self dot next button. Okay. As I mentioned command is equal to self dot next button. Okay. We will run this now. selecting the answer and after I press the next button now the next question and the corresponding options are loaded correctly and answer this this one as parenthesis str and this one okay now what happens after pressing this there are no more questions in the list so you will get an error what error is displayed so I have got this error index error list index out of range so I have to modify this next button function. What should be done? So once it has reached the end of the list, what should be done in the next button? These things are same. If self.question equal to len of q, it means that all the questions have been displayed already. It has reached the end. That can be checked using the len function. So if both are equal, I am just going to call display result function. So that score can be displayed. Else part. We are just going to display the options. Fine. So display result is going to be very simple. I am just going to display the score in percentage and then the number of correct answers, number of wrong answers. All these things will be displayed as a message box. So score result can be calculated using this formula. Number of correct answers divided by NQ into 100. And correct answers we have obtained already. Wrong answers can be calculated. And I can use this join method to display all these things 
a join method will take all the items in the list and joins them into one string fine and slash n is used as a separator here we will run this now everything is updated right now okay this is our quiz application I'm just selecting a wrong answer right now. Str and list is mutable and triple is mutable. Okay, it has reached the end of the question. When you press next, we get the result. So we got I uh, have entered one wrong answer and correct answers are four and the score is 80 percent each. That's it. The quiz application is built very easily using Python. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, kindly share and subscribe for more videos on Python programming.